afternoon. Oh, all right. uh, one disclosure from Dr. Dimmick, as noted there. Uh, bariatric surgery is increasingly becoming the most common abdominal operation in the United States. We now perform more than 179,000 operations annually, and with an increasing rising obesity epidemic, it's expected to increase even further. Although it is an effective treatment for morbid obesity and its related comorbidities, early reports about this procedure raise serious safety concerns. This report by Dave Flum in 2005 demonstrated that at 30 days, patients treated at low volume centers had as high as 8% mortality rates. In response, multiple efforts were initiated to improve safety for bariatric surgery. This included centers of excellence, statewide quality collaboratives, and national registries to track outcomes. In addition to the self-evident goal of improving safety for these patients, policymakers and payers are also interested in knowing what impact this has on cost. So in that context, to better understand quality and cost, we wanted to explore what is the relationship between a hospital's outcomes and their payments for bariatric patients. We used Medicare claims data from 2009 and 2010 to review approximately 24,000 patients um, who underwent either a roux y gastric bypass a lap band placement, or a sleeve gastrectomy. Um, to assess quality, we looked at rates of serious complications. We used standardized definitions previously described in bariatric cohort studies in Medicare to identify medical surgical complications. Um, and medical complications, for example, cardiac arrest, pulmonary embolism, and stroke. Surgical complications, including reoperation, bleeding, or dehiscence. And mortality, which we defined as death for any reason within 30 days of the index operation. In order to compare these hospitals fairly, we had to risk adjust the outcomes of their complication rate. We did so using a multivariable logistic regression model that accounted for patient factors, including age, gender, race, and insurance, their comorbid disease, using standardized definitions defined by Elixhauser, and the type of operation, including um, lap band, lap ruin Y, open ruin Y, and a lap sleeve. In addition to risk adjustment, there is still some variation that we see across centers that may be due to the quality of the signal, so we also had to perform a reliability adjustment. Um, what this effectively ends up doing is shrinking the variation closer to the mean, and a primary advantage of doing this is to avoid the risk of misclassifying outliers as either high or low performers due to, the, um, due to their volume of how many procedures they perform. Um, in doing so, we then uh, created risk and reliability adjusted scores for each of the hospitals in our study. As seen here, they are ranked in order from lowest complication rates to highest. We then divided them into quartiles. Those with the lowest complication rates we define as a high quality hospital, and those with high complication rates we defined as a low quality hospital. With our cohorts defined, we then want to look at payments. We looked at 30 day total episode payments. Payments were price standardized to account for how payments vary based on hospital and geographic variation. In addition, we risk adjusted these payments to account for patient factors and type of operation. To further understand where any differences in payments occurred, we also broke down the payments by components um, that included physician services, the index operation, the post-discharge ancillary services, and any payments that were made for a readmission. Comparing our two groups in terms of patient characteristics between high and low quality hospitals, we found no difference in the age of the patients treated uh, their gender, or their comorbid diseases. Comparing the structural elements of the hospitals, we found no difference in their ownership status, in their size, in terms of number of ORs, or in their staffing and the number of nursing ratio they had. Taking these all into account, we then compared high quality hospitals and found that all, for all patients, high quality hospitals on average saved about $2,000 per admission for bariatric procedures. To better understand what effect high quality hospitals might have on different population groups, we then looked at low risk patients. These are patients who based on our logistic regression model, we would expect to have a low probability of having a complication and found that there was actually still a difference of roughly $1,300 that was statistically significant. Additionally, we then looked at high risk patients and found that patients who you would expect to have a high probability of a complication um, the difference was nearly $3,300 between high quality and low quality hospitals. Knowing that this variation in payments existed, we then wanted to explore where does the difference in payments occur. Um, so we first looked at physician payments and post-discharge ancillary services 
and found that per admission, there really weren't that many significant differences, roughly $300 for each. However, when we looked at their index hospitalization, high quality hospitals on average saved about $1,000 per admission and readmissions when they did occur, high quality hospitals had significant savings, approximately $2,500. In conclusion, high quality hospitals were associated with lower payments from Medicare and that these savings were largest in high risk patients. Uh, this study should be interpreted in the context of many limitations. First, this is a focused sample uh, because we're using Medicare claims data, many of the patients in this sample were older and being paid by Medicare. However, uh, Medicare is the largest payer and gives us the largest geographic sample across the whole country of how payments occur for this procedure. Uh, second, the coding of complications. Uh, there could be variation in how uh, different surgeons and hospitals code their complications after a procedure. To account for that, we use different coding algorithms to make the, our coding more sensitive and specific including adding a length of stay criteria to identify clinically relevant complications. And then finally, because we were using claims data, there are many unmeasured outcomes that we were not able to assess, such as um, weight loss after surgery, which is certainly an important quality metric that's important to this procedure. However, that should be in addition to and not instead of safety concerns raised by the complications we identified. Uh, moving forward, this study helps make a business case for improving quality by demonstrating that quality improvement should be seen as a cost-saving strategy. Uh, and second, that high-risk patients not only provide an opportunity to improve quality, but also to make a significant improvement in cost. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge my funding sources, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation and the Department of Veteran Affairs, uh, and my co-authors is listed there, um, and I'll be happy to take your questions. Thank you.